What's up, y'all? It's Almighty, and I'm back with another Power Book 2 Gold Season 4 Theory and Prediction. Now, let's talk about Stephen Ott. Yesterday, somebody mentioned in the comment section, hey, do a video on Steve Ott being Mahoney. And at first, I ignored it, but then I slept on it. And currently, I just woke up, perhaps still stinking and yawning, right? But I'm that serious about my content. And I thought about it. I'm like, what if Steve Ott was Mahoney? Is there any evidence that we could use to possibly have an argument for Stephen I being Mahoney? And then I thought, I'm like, it's very possible that he could be. Now, the reason why we're going to have this theory is because everybody knows, if you've been watching Power since its inception, you know that any minor character, any small character whose face you see in earlier seasons could always end up becoming major players or people who have a big impact on the plot going forward. Now, I want to encourage y'all to go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. Also, after this video, feel free to check out all the other playlists that I have on my channel, talking about a whole different variety of topics. But if you're here for the power theories, let's get to it right now, okay? So, when it comes to Mahoney, right? Mahoney is someone who was mentioned only once in season two of Power Book 2 Ghost where Mecca mentions Mahoney, and he basically says that Mahoney is his biggest, most dangerous op. Now, we do not see Mahoney ever again. I mean, first of all, we never see Mahoney, but we don't hear a mention of Mahoney ever again, right? Even Noma doesn't mention Mahoney. Now, here's the thing, right? When I made a video previously where I was discussing how RSJ could be Mahoney, I remember someone in the comments section, they said, hey, um, that's possibly just an Easter egg because there's a new showrunner who goes by the name of Mahoney, who's the showrunner of Power Book 2 Ghost now. It's not the uh, the chick. So I basically fell back from the Mahoney content after that because I'm like, that could be true. But now being that this guy made this presentation to me, I mean, this guy presented me with this theory yesterday, I got to thinking, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Mahoney will have to be someone who's very powerful, has a lot of pull, and probably his government name is not going to be Mahoney. Now, if someone who was on a way lower level, like James St. Patrick, if his name was Ghost, and that was his street name, and everyone knew him as James St. Patrick, and just like real life, you know, when you're dealing with levels of drug dealing and you're doing illegal activities, you're not going to want your real name attached to it. So we first have to assume that Mahoney is not the government name of whatever character would end up being Mahoney. That's the first thing. The second thing is this, right? We all know in real life, now this is gonna be a little bit racy, what I'm gonna say. Based on whatever viewers and listeners of a particular group may be watching and listening to this video. So, I'm gonna give a disclaimer by saying, this is gonna be racy. But we all know that at the highest levels of drug dealing in real life, and as some Jamaicans would say, in our real life, we know that at the highest levels, the people who got the most product, the people who are making the most rules, they are not only of the Caucasian descent, but a lot of them are government officials. Now, as I say this, now we can begin to piece the skeleton of this theory that is Stephen Ott possibly being Mahoney, right? So. That's already ammo that we have going in that direction. Now, if Mahoney is alive, it's very, very possible that he's been doing this background research. I mean, I mean that he already did his background research on Mecca. He already knows who Noma is, right? By the way, by the way, if Mahoney is not Stephen Ott, there's also the possibility of Stephen Ott maybe being Noma Supplier. We don't know who Noma Supplier is. It has not been confirmed whether Noma is the top dog, but I will say it this way. She's black. There are no black people at the very top of the, the national drug trade. Let's just be real about this. But like I was going to say, we all know in season two of Power Book 2 Ghosts, when Monet and Mecca were in the basketball court and Mecca started getting shot at. Assumingly so, that was Mahoney. Now, there was no confirmation to show that Mecca set up that shooting. And had he done that, it's very dangerous. You really run the risk of not only him or Monet getting shot, but innocent bystanders. And it happened in broad daylight. 
I think if he was to arrange a, a, a shootout to, to, to make himself look a, a certain type of way in Monet's eyes, it would at least be at nighttime when he got to deal with less blowback, right? So, assumingly so, Mahoney was on Mecca's bumper sticker. And he tried to take Mecca out in broad daylight. That's how much he got a problem with Mecca, right? And underneath all of that, we could have had severe wars. I mean, we assumingly had severe wars going on between Noma and Mecca and whoever Mahoney's group is. Now, being that we know that at the highest levels of drug trade, the very highest levels of drug trade, they're usually Caucasian men and also government officials, right? You can't just be a Caucasian man. You got to be somebody that works for the government. We all know about this stuff. We all know in real life that this is what goes down. So it becomes less and less far-fetched to speculate like, hey, maybe Stephen I, maybe, maybe he could be Mahoney or some kind of other mayor, major player within the drug business, right? Now, they didn't have to bring Stephen I into the first season. And I don't even think we've seen him past the first episode or two of Ghost, right? When it first started. They didn't have to bring him in there. They could have brought any character in there. So with them having him talk to Tariq and say, hey, listen, we got to make your father look good, this, that, and the third, right? They could have had anyone else from the Democratic Party come. And any one of those people could have end up, ended up being Mahoney. I, I mean, Mahoney as well. But they had Stephen Ott come. So now him having his face there means that he was not only a part of OG Power, but now he is a part of Power Book 2 Ghost. Now here's the thing, right? Stephen I, he took a liking to Ghost. So this goes into the theories of whether Ghost is alive or not. Everything becomes intertwined now. So now for those of you who believe that Ghost is still alive, now we have a possible scenario of maybe Stephen Ott was taking Ghost under the wing and showing Ghost how you can maneuver between this, this, and that, or you could transition from doing drugs to doing that, right? But maybe, what if Stephen Ott was just of the D Democratic Party, he is Mahoney moving drugs, and maybe Ghost didn't know that. So maybe Stephen Ott helps Ghost disappear, and somehow, some way, Stephen Ott reveals himself as Mahoney and then finds a reason to keep Tariq under his thumb, selling drugs for the government. So now Tariq becomes this major player for the government, but also he's in a position where there's really no way out. Who would be the person that could possibly help him get out of this bond, this, this unholy matrimony with Stephen Ott slash Mahoney slash the Democratic Party. Ghost. So now, if you believe Ghost is alive, now we have a reason to bring Ghost back in. He got to save his son now. He didn't know the Democratic Party was giving it up like that, even though he shouldn't have trusted him too much anyway. And also, right? Also, also, we got Black Dahlia. This is how Black Dahlia could rope into Stephen Ott and Mahoney and bring it full circle between book two and book four, right? Dahlia is a thing already. How did Dahlia get made? By a scientist. Where did the scientist create Dahlia? In a lab. Now, when we're talking about stuff like crystal meth, crack, ecstasy, all these other kinds of drugs, of course, not all drugs are made in labs, but when you think about, you know, Oxycontin and all these other drugs, right? Where are they made? No, first, who makes them? Scientists. <laughs> Secondly, how are they made? And as Dexter would say, laboratories. Now, if Dahlia was supposed to be for something else, for a whole nother purpose, but ends up becoming a drug, that's just the way other drugs get made. The only people who could get those drugs on the streets would be government officials, people who work for the government. Other than that, these scientists who make these drugs, they don't have connections to the street. You know, they show on TV, hey man, crack got made by some random, what, gang members in the house? Come on now, stop it. Transforming cocaine into crack, that's science. Science takes place in the laboratory. <laughs> these dudes in the street, 
They didn't go to school and graduate science. They don't know science. So let's be real. Crack was made in a laboratory. You know what I'm saying? Just like Black Dahlia. Just like all these other drugs. So that means from Black Dahlia's inception, it had to have made its way to the street. It had to have made its way to the street through government officials. Am I reaching? If I'm reaching right now, go in the comment section. Tell me I'm reaching. Tell me I'm doing too much. But I don't think I'm doing too much. So now, if it takes government officials to get these major drugs into these communities, right? Right? Or into the streets. Anyway, they got there through government officials. Now, what if Stephen I was one of the first people who worked for the government who was given this assignment and that's, hey, the government has a new avenue of making money and that's Black Dahlia. <laughs> Y'all know what we did with heroin. <laughs> Y'all know what we did with weed. Y'all know what we did with cocaine and crack. Now it's time to do it for Black Dahlia. What's not to say? What's not to say? I know we have this whole other story of we only got one chemist that knows how to do it. They can easily write in that some other chemist figured out how to break it down. Some dude or some chick who's smarter than the short haired chick that we already know. Cause chances are she gonna die in season two anyway. I didn't see her in the trailer at all. So she's probably dead, right? And all I'm saying is when you think about it, a lot of reasoning could go behind Steven Ott possibly being my home. Now I know I was now I know I was reaching a little bit. I know I pulled some of this out of my bunghole, which I gotta admit. If Steven Ott was my homie, it would be pretty freaking awesome. 